book review, how to raise a healthy gamer. I'll keep this video short and simple. Uh, I really love Dr. K's work. And uh, if, if I could ask him to write another book, I would love him to summarize his knowledge of the uh, Eastern philosophies and traditions, uh, uh, how those all play out. He's already done a lot of that in the, the guides that he's made that I have uh, already completed Dr. K's guides. And those were really excellent. And he does introduce a lot of these concepts. If he could put it into a book form in the same way that this book perfectly answers how to raise a healthy gamer, I think he would do an amazing job perfectly answering or, you know, bridging that gap of what that sort of esoteric wisdom is in the Eastern philosophies and traditions and bringing it over to the Western audience with his uh, knowledge as a doctor of uh, psychiatry, uh, neuroscience, psychology, all of those, I think he would do an excellent job. When I started reading this book, I felt the first 120 pages were almost perfectly written um, in the sense that if he had a manuscript and he had to revise the manuscript over and over until he found the right way, way to word everything, I felt the first third of this book, well, first half of this book really fulfilled that. But then the second half, while it's still excellent, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with it, it almost feel, felt like it still hadn't reached that, let's say, 10 out of 10 revision that the first half of the book I felt had, but it's still good. I don't have a child and I am not addicted to video games, so this book doesn't necessarily apply to me if I'm looking at it through that lens, but if I say I'm taking care of myself, like I was taking care of a child, and the addiction wasn't video games, but it was still watching YouTube videos excessively uh, or eating sugars or any other bad habit that I might have. I can read this book and see it through that lens and being able to have that perspective of uh, open-ended questions uh, that you would ask a child. I found my mind drifting quite often when confronting those questions instead of applying it, asking to a child about video games, applying it to myself with my own addictions, I found myself drifting in thought, realizing this is really, really excellent. <laughs> Got a question for Dr. K. Don't know if I'll ever get a chance to ask him this, but hypothetically, if I did have a child that was addicted to video games, would it work for me to say, hey kid, read this book, I read it, you read it, right, we'll make a plan together. Does that work or do I have to take that? <laughs> role of responsibility for it. Uh, I don't know, would it would it ruin the chances of actually helping the relationship if I uh, put this book in front of my kid and told them to read it? Would it break the fourth wall too much? Would it break their mind or would it actually help the situation? That, that's a question I would like to ask. <laughs> in my opinion, I feel like it would help, but I don't know. I don't know. He probably has the knowledge. Um, to really concisely and cleverly present the topics in the order A, B, C, so that you do get to topic D in the book and realize, okay, it is building on all the previous things. It approaches how to deal with this issue perfectly. It's not about putting restrictions on the child. It's about firstly, before you even talk with the child, you have to listen to the child. Before you even do that, you need to know what he's even going through, what the child's going through, and what, you know, the sort of open-ended questions that you should be asking and what the reflective listening even is. And that is the, that's the gift of this book, is uh, you don't get a clearer explanation for how to raise a healthy gamer than this book. And the title is honestly perfect because it, that is the core theme and thread that, that's the golden thread that goes throughout the whole book. Uh, I felt the last part was really interesting when talking about video games and ADHD. As I've talked about previously on my channel, I've dealt with my own uh, mental health issues. And when I was at university, I went to the counsellor slash therapist. And straight away I got diagnosed with ADD, autism. At the time I was depressed, uh, severe anxiety and a negative bias. I got introduced to the CBT, uh, the Cognitive Behavioral Therapy uh, techniques. I looked through all of that online literature to understand what my mind was doing, like catastro 
catastrophization, taking a small situation but taking it to the most negative possible consequence and recognizing that I do have a negative bias, that I was pessimistic by default and that I had to choose consciously to be optimistic despite the natural proclivity to have negative thoughts. And while it can be naturally a part of our personality and we can be uh, for more neurotic proclivity, um, you can still make conscious choices that after that negative thought fires out, you can choose to have a positive one. Anyway, I'm getting a bit off topic. What I wanted to say is I did get diagnosed with autism and ADHD when I was younger, about five years ago. I think having awareness of it has actually reduced the amount of ADHD and the amount of autism that I have, particularly the autism. I feel like I'm a lot more calm and integrated into myself and have easier times having conversations with people. And because I'm less neurotic, I, I, I think uh, the autopilot of low empathy, I think, has sort of tapered down. Um, but throughout this book, the number of times that I would get distracted and unable to focus on the page makes me think, yeah, there's still definitely remnants of the distractibility and the lack of ability to focus my attention. A hundred percent. This has been consistent in my life ever since I was three years old in nursery in the UK. The teacher was saying, oh, he's good at numbers, not so good at words, but very easily distracted. This has been consistent throughout my whole life. Very, very distracted. So when reading those chapters on ADHD, my mind wandered so much because I would read something like, oh my God, that's so true. And then I would think and think and think, oh, I, f I would try to get back to the book. I'd read another sentence. And, oh my God, that's so true. And this and this and this and this. And it's like every sentence that was written in some of those paragraphs in that chapter towards the end of the book felt like it applied to so much of my life experience. So it made me more aware of myself and the importance that I've got to contribute to meditation and calming my mind down and getting more into my body and spending less time in front of screens and less time having my mind wandering all over the place. This book has uh, really uh, reminded me that I've made great progress in that regard in terms of how much meditation I've been doing in my life and other forms of progress. While I'm not in a perfect situation and I still can't, I still don't have control over my attention <laughs> or even most of my actions, to be honest. Uh, I, I do, I do still, I, I think I'm being a bit harsh on myself, but I have made really good progress and this book helped remind me of that. I do plan to read a book a second time, more noted, um, and, I, and I will read it again when I do have children because uh, it's just a good book on parenting, really, in general. And while the book spec specifies that it's, you know, for, for video game addiction, I think the lessons that you learn of uh, reflective listening and open-ended questions and realizing that you want to be on the same team as a child and you don't want to impose by force restrictions and boundaries that they can't even agree with in the first place which is only going to cause you know if you're if you're using force you're going to be automatically responded with um uh oh what's the word i'm looking for i think it begins with an r uh there's going to be a response to it basically force is going to have a, an equal and opposite reaction that's right reaction so every time you try to impose force you're going to get automatically a reaction that's the opposite um and so realize that you want to be on the same team and you want to take an understanding first and foremost before you even think about acting. Uh, you've got to talk. And that can apply to any area outside of video games, just this ability of listening. And it made me realize, this book, the lack of um, parenting techniques that I managed, that I, that, that I just never knew about never observed in my own life, not from, from my own parents or observing other parents or uh, not being introduced to these psychological concepts um, of, uh, of uh, listening well, for example, until very much later in my life that I realized, gosh, you know, there are so many excellent life lessons that I would have really, really benefited from if I had been exposed to this from a child, this sort of uh, understanding first and foremost, uh, I keep saying it, open-ended questions and reflective listening. I keep saying it over and over again. It's something that can apply to anyone that they can take in their own life. And it also made me recognize in my own life all of the times I'm on autopilot. I talked about this neurotic ability to 
uh, have a, a, a pessimistic outlook. Um, recognizing how it has tinged, it's sort of painted in a darker tone experiences in life that I've gone through or hypothetical scenarios that I imagine could happen in the future. And this tinging, this darkening of that, I recognize as a bias that could be biological, it could have been um, inherited that in, in a biological genetic sort of sense, but also the exposure that I've seen to it since I was a young kid, uh, particularly having parents, both of them being able to hypo hypothesize negatively other situations that they have observed in their life and seeing that they do it automatically. I've recognized that I have my own ability, well, ability, it happens automatically as well for me. And to recognize this bias that I might have, this uh, not the most positive action taken, let's say, reading this book makes me aware that I have to be doubly aware of where I have my own pitfalls. And I think this is something good about my generation is there is a much larger degree of self-awareness. Unfortunately, I think it does come for most people with a nihilistic sort of sense of self-awareness. Whereas this book is very optimistically saying you can do it. You've got to be patient with yourself as well. You've got to take care of... And this book reminds you, you've got to take care of your own schedule and your own life first before you can even help another person. And so that's also really good. I feel like I'm rambling at this point, but uh, yeah, very good book. I doubt anyone who uh, is in that sort of middle ground, like, oh, should I read this book or not? I don't know. I should watch, you know, someone who's reviewed it. I doubt any of them would have the patience to hear this ramble that I've made, which doesn't even focus on the contents of the book. But um, at least for where my mind is at at the moment, I know I'll look back one day on this video and say, yeah, yeah, that, that, that is how I was feeling at the time. And there, there is so much great wisdom in it. And uh, I 100% recommend it. There's nothing else I can say. It's like, it's like a 10 out of 10 book. The only, only thing that I would say reduces it from a 10 to a 9.5, for example, would be the fact that I did feel that the first half or maybe third of the book was perfectly written. I feel like it was like perfectly written and more time would have been given. I felt, this is my impression, I could be wrong. More time would have been given to get that as perfectly as possible and then maybe buy some rush off the publisher to say, hey, look, you've got to get this book done. The second half of last two thirds couldn't have had that same dedicated attention. And there's nothing wrong with it. I just, that's the impression that I got. And I could be wrong. Yeah. And it's still excellent. So if you don't think it's 10 out of 10, it's 9.5 out of 10. Go get the book. Go read it. Highly recommend it. Thanks for watching.